What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So I wanted to jump in and just do a quick color grade tutorial. I swear it's not going to be nearly as long as the last one. I've been playing around with some of the new features in DaVinci 20 and I just thought it would be great to put together a little color grade tutorial and incorporate some of those awesome features into the tutorial itself to show you guys how powerful these tools are. So without further ado, let's just hop on into DaVinci Resolve here. And again, we're working with a color managed timeline. So color science of DaVinci YRGB, timeline color space, DaVinci Y gamut intermediate, output color science of, or output color space of Rec 709 gamma 2.2, or you can do gamma 2.4, totally up to you. So what I wanna do once I've saved the project settings in the color management tab, I want to then open up my clips tab and as you can see, I've got a few clips here that are from the same project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of them and then just right click and add into a new group. So I already have a pre-existing group, so I'm just going to keep my group as is. But once you have them all in a group, then you have the ability to make adjustments to the entire batch as well as the individual shots on the clip level. So you have the group pre-clip and group post clip, which affect all of the clips within that group. And then you can just go to the clip basis and just do your individual grading on each shot. So quickly, let's go to the group pre-clip. This is where I have my color space transform input gamma of S log three. Then the output color space, I'm using DaVinci wide gamut and output gamma DaVinci intermediate. So you gotta set that up before you start doing your grading because that's what our timeline setting is. And then let's pop on over to our group post clip. You'll notice I have my node tree already set up, so it just makes it a little easier. So then we have our conversion from DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate into our output color space of Rec 709 and output gamma of gamma 2.2. So that's what our, again, color management for our project is set to. And we wanna have that at the end in our group post clip. So it's affecting our clips after any grading that we do. All right, so now that we have that done, what I wanna do is I wanna hop on over to our clip level here. And so we're gonna start with our white balance. What I wanna do is I wanna drag and drop from the effects panel, my chromatic adaptation. And I'm gonna change the source illuminant type to color temperature and then the target illuminant type to color temperature as well. So I shot this at around 5,600 Kelvin. So I'm gonna do 5,600 Kelvin for both of them. I find Sony footage tends to have a bit of a magenta hue to it or tint. So I wanna basically compensate for that by adding a little bit of green into the tint here. So I'm gonna bring this down a decent amount. Yeah, about 24, negative 24.7 here. And so as you can see, subtle, but it adds more green into our image. So we're gonna leave it at that. Obviously you're gonna to have to adjust it to whatever best suits your image. So next we're gonna hop on into our HDR wheels and we're gonna play around with them a bit to get uh, an exposure that kind of shapes our image a little bit more here. So what I wanna do is I wanna first bring down my dark value. So let's bring down the dark value. I'm gonna bring it down to negative, about negative three here. Then I'm gonna bring my shadow value down quite a bit here to negative 0.7. I, yeah, we'll bring it down to negative 0.7. Then the light value, I'm gonna bring that up. So I wanna bring that up to about 0 0.6, I do believe. And so we'll just leave it at that. Adjust it according to your image, obviously. Next, we're gonna go into our contrast node. So for this one, let's right click on it and then do a composite mode of luminosity. So now we're just focusing on the brightness values, not adjusting the hue or saturation values when we make our adjustments. So we're gonna go into our primary color wheels and let's just play around with the lift gamma and gain. So the lift is gonna be focusing more on the darker portions of our image. The gamma is more the midtones, and the gain is more the highlights and brighter areas of our image. Obviously there is crossover uh, between the three, but we just play around with it to add some more contrast to our image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first 
use my offset actually to do a global adjustment. And then I'm going to go in and use the lift gamma gain to do the individual adjustments. So I'm going to bring my offset down to, let's see, 20, about 20.25 here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my gain up to 1.07. I'm going to bring my gamma down a decent amount here. You can see you can see what it's doing here to our image, but I'm going to bring it down to negative 0.08. And then for my lift, I'm going to bring it down to negative 0.05. All right, so we're going to leave it at that for now. Then let's pop on over to our group post clip nodes. So first one we're going to work with here is our film look. So we're going to just use the film look creator uh, that's an effect in DaVinci Resolve here. All right, just drag and drop. And let's just go to a uh, clean slate here. So what I want to do is I want to scroll down and go to my film look blend. So with my film look blend, I'm going to bring it up to about 0 0.519. And I'm going to select for my core look, the Rochester look. I'm going to leave the skin bias as is. I'm going to leave the exposure. I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit to about 0, 1.057. And then I'm going to bring the highlights down to 0 0 0.791. And then I'm going to leave the fade as it is. You can add fade to yours if you want totally up to you. Just a personal preference, really. And then I'm going to bring the white balance down to, I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. We're going to bring the white balance down to 5,628 Kelvin. So that really cools off the image a little bit more. And then the tint, I'm going to bring it down to 3.8. And then we're going to play around with the subtractive saturation and the richness a bit. So we're going to use the subtractive saturation actually kind of counterintuitively. We're going to add some saturation into our image. So about 1.837. And then the richness, I'm just going to add a little bit of richness, 1.023 there. And I'm going to leave the bleach bypass as is. You can add it in if you want. It's a cool effect, but uh, it's not what I'm using in this tutorial. Next, we're going to enable our split toning. So we can play around with this a bit, but I want to bring my hue angle to 47, 47.4. So as you can see, that warms up my highlights, cools down the shadows, just creates a nice color contrast to our image. But I'm not going to leave it at 100%, obviously. So I want to keep it like a subtle touch to our image and just kind of stylizing the image a little bit more. So we're going to have it at 0 0.326. Next, we're going to go back to our clip adjustments. And then let's go to our saturation node. So with this one, let's toggle it on. So we're going to right click on it and we're going to go to our color space and select HSV, which stands for hue, saturation and value, which also is kind of interchangeable with brightness. Then we're going to toggle channels one and three off just leaving channels two on because channel two is the one that's dealing with saturation. We don't want to adjust our hue or our brightness values when we're fiddling with the knobs here. Then let's go to our primary color wheels and it's the gamma and gain wheels that we're going to be using. So the gamma kind of focuses more on the richer saturations in your image, whereas the gain focuses more on the brighter portions of the image and like the highlights. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to actually decrease the gamma slightly to negative 0.02. And then with the gain, I'm going to increase it a decent amount here to 1.36. You can just play around with it and see what looks best. But I'm going to leave it at that. Another thing you can do is you can go into the custom curves and then you can add a bunch of control points and mess around with the saturation here, which is really cool. It's very 
controllable. Uh, you have a lot of uh, versatility when you go in this way. So I would recommend trying that out. But for this scenario, I'm going to leave it as is. And then this is where things get super fun. So we're going to go to our color adjustment node here. And we're going to be using the new Chroma Warper. So this is a extremely powerful tool for adjusting the hues of our colors in our image, as well as the saturations too. And I'll just show you in a second. So I'm going to expand this here, drag it over here. Let's reduce the size slightly. So with this tool, you have the option of selecting the normal mode or the point to point mode, or you can pin a point to basically prevent that area from being affected from the adjustments. So it's super cool. So let's dive into this here. So with the normal mode, if you make a selection, it's going to impact everything within that bubble. So all the hues within that bubble are going to be impacted by your adjustment. Whereas if we undo that, and if we use the point to point mode, it's just that specific color is then going to be altered to the specific hue that the red point is landing on. So this is a little bit more precise and it affects less of your overall image. So it really depends on what you're looking to achieve with the adjustment. But let's for, for now, let's go with the normal mode and let's select the green areas here. Let's bring them a little bit more towards the yellows and oranges. Yeah, it's already looking a little bit better. So as you can see, it has affected our skin tones there. So let's do a pinpoint and select our skin. So that just removes the adjustment from the skin tones there, which is super cool. And then, as you can see, we do have some greens there. I might want to try to get rid of them. So I'm going to try using the point to point instead. So I'm going to select that. And yeah, it's just just that a little bit. Just so, yeah, look at that. It just gets rid of some of the greens, desaturates them a bit, shifts them a little bit more towards the warmer tones. I'm liking that. That's looking pretty good. So then we can always go to our vector scope. We can have our skin line indicator there, and we can just go in and just let's make sure that our skin tones are looking good still. Yeah, see, they're perfectly lined up on our skin tone indicator line, which is awesome. And then, yeah, you can do other adjustments like, let's see here, if we want to, for instance, add a little bit more hue to the water, we can bring that more into the blue or teal, desaturate it more if we want. But yeah, it's there's just so many options that you can do with this. In the brief period of time that I've played around with it, you can really create some awesome looks from just using this tool as well as your basic exposure and contrast and balance adjustments. So yeah, already like that's looking pretty good. I mean, I might get rid of the blue in the water, but yeah. Yeah, it's already looking pretty good. So it's really like desaturating the background there and just making it a little bit more moody and kind of along more along the lines of what I'm looking for. I should mention with the Chroma Warper, so the closer you bring the adjustment to the center here, the less saturated the color is gonna be. So for instance, if we're bringing this point in towards the center, it's gonna significantly desaturate our greens of the image. Whereas if we bring it out as far as possible, it's gonna introduce a lot of that color. All right, so next, another new feature or an upgrade to uh, an existing feature is the Magic Mask. So with this, they've introduced some awesome AI features that just really enhances the capabilities of the Magic Mask. So for this demonstration, what I wanna do is I just wanna select the trees in the background here and just darken them. So. What we're going to do is we're going to just add instead of drawing like a polygon. Now all you have to do is just add little dots to where you want the mask. And 
as soon as we switch it from faster to better, it just really finesses that selection there, as you can see with the trees, and just does an incredible job. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my HDR wheels and just bring the global wheel down ever so slightly here. Yeah, so that just it darkens my background there. So super awesome. I could even kind of push it to the limits and see what it would do if it if I uh, tried tracking our swimmer here. Let's take a peek. If we go better. So yeah, I mean, obviously there'd probably be a little bit of difficulties because the majority of his body is underwater, but again, it does a pretty great job of finding the portions of the image that I'm looking to actually track and include. So highly recommend trying that out, the new magic mask out. It seems like it has a lot of potential, especially because I found the previous magic mask to oftentimes lose my subject or point of interest quite easily. Or there was like a lot of refinements that I would have to do and it just would take so long. So I'm really excited to try out the magic mask a little bit more and incorporate it into more of my projects. And hopefully the ease of use has significantly increased because I think it is an awesome feature, but there was definitely some work that needed to be done on it. The only other thing I want to do is just add a little glow node here and we'll just search up glow, drag and drop, and then we're just going to decrease the shine threshold all the way, decrease spread. In the composite type, we're going to do soft light. And then in the global blend, we're going to bring this down quite a bit here to about 1.24. Just play around, see what looks good for your image but I think I'm going to probably leave it at 1.24 there. I'm actually going to, I'm going to go back into my clip and just play around a bit with my contrast. I want to just finesse that a little bit. So I'm going to bring the gain up a little bit here, and then I'm going to bring the gamma down. So we're just going to play around with that a little bit. And I might even bring the lift up a little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to play around with it a little bit here. Bear with me. Yeah, so I'm going to just leave the contrast at that now. I think it just makes the image look a little nicer than what it was. The background mask, I might just go into the HDR and just decrease the global amount a little bit more to about 0 0.4. So that's without, that's with it. Obviously, I didn't track the mask here just to save a little time, but you would want to actually go in and track the entire mask just to make sure it works for your entire clip. So this is our log image and then our fully graded image. It's a very quick color grade. Obviously, it's not perfect and I'm not a professional colorist, but I just wanted to put together something quickly that could be valuable to share some new features of DaVinci Resolve with you guys. And let me know if you like this. If you learned something, that's great. But I'll see you in the next video. Bye.